too exciting. So Kate is having a difficult time differentiating all of the count names. My head is spinning when all of the counts sound the same to me. Does unearned revenue belong on the income statement or on the balance sheet? Create a study sheet by categor categorizing all of the following accounts into a table with the following headings. Some accounts may be used more than once. So we're gonna go through all of these accounts and we're gonna put them in their respective spot. So remember we talked about the five different categories of accounts. We have three different, we have three different statements, financial statements and five different accounts. So we will put them in the order that they belong. Accounts payable. Anytime you see a payable, it's a liability. A liability is an account. Uh, a liability is when you owe money, when you owe something. So um, accounts payable is when you get your bill in the mail and you owe your cell phone company. You haven't paid them yet. You've received your bill, but you haven't paid them. So you have an account outstanding. Accounts receivable. If a liability is when you owe and accounts payable is when you get a bill outstanding, what would accounts receivable be? Because it is when you do some work for someone and you hand them a bill and they haven't paid you yet. Advertising expense. Yeah. It is an expense. So on your income statement, at the end of the day, your income statement will take your revenues, it'll less your expenses, and you'll find out if you made money or lost money in a net income or a net loss. So all of your expenses will go into your income statement as expenses. Expenses are pretty simple because they have it in the, in the title. That's a pretty dead giveaway. Insurance expense. Owner's capital ending balance. So this is a bit of a trick. This is a bit of a trick question. This isn't actually an account, right? These are all accounts. These would have account codes listed beside them. This is not. This is just found on certain statements. So what we'll do is we will add it. So just make a note. This is not an account, but it still belongs on statements. So the owner's capital ending balance owner's capital ending balance belongs on the owner's equity section of your balance sheet. It also will belong on your statement of changes in equity. It'll be the last line on your statement of changes in equity. Interest payable. Prepaid expenses. Revenue. Not revenue. <laughs> asset. So why is it an asset? Yeah, you've got... That's like when you, you, you start your phone plan, let's say you win the lottery and you're like, crap, I don't want to pay my bills for a year, so you just dump all your money into your accounts. right? You prepay your phone bill, $1,000 and you get your bill and all of a sudden you're at like $900 and they just gives you, still has a credit for you, that would be the same as this. So you have a credit with one of your, uh, with one of your uh, suppliers or one of, your, one of your service providers. And so that would be an asset because you can always cancel your account and they'll pay you back. I thought for sure Someone was going to say expenses because it has expense in it, but you're smart. This is a good class. Interest expense. <coughs> Ex 
expenses. When you take out a loan, you pay interest. That is an expense. That is money you'll never get back, right? Just like when you pay your hydro bill, your gas bill. Withdrawals. So a withdrawal would be when someone takes money out of the account. So in this case, it wouldn't be a liability because the money is already gone. We don't owe it. But when an owner takes money out of their business, they are negatively impacting their equity. So it will show up on their statement of changes in equity. Right? Because if, if an owner takes money out of the business, that's that much less cash in the business. There's that much less value in the business. So the owner's capital beginning balance, again, just like the ending balance, is this an account? No, so just make a note of that. Where does it belong? Belongs on the statement of changes in equity. The way statement of changes in equity work, if you want to even look at two pages, one more page on your book, just flip over the next page. You're going to see the middle section of the... Uh, right here. So we start with our opening balance, March 1st. It's page 9, sorry, two pages. So we start with our opening balance and we end with our ending balance. These are not actually accounts, these just help formalize our statement of changes in equity. Prepaid rent. Awesome. Vehicle expenses. Furniture. What is an asset? Yeah, what is an asset? The common resources which are held by the business. That. And if it has a future benefit. That helps generate revenue, yeah. yeah. Did everyone hear that? Can I say it louder? Sure. Yeah, turn around and say it to the class. The economic resources which are held by the business and it has the future benefits. Yeah, it helps. So it's common resources held by the business that will help generate revenue in the future. So furniture, equipment, buildings, land, all of those cash, all of those would be considered assets. Salaries expense. Service revenue. Other expenses, interest income, is it revenue? Who are your things is revenue? Interest income, which one of the five would it fall into? What is income? Income is, is money you're making, right? So interest expense would be when you take out a loan and you pay interest. Interest income would be when you give a loan and you receive interest. So if you're receiving money, is it? Revenue. Yeah, right? Because this is going to the end of the year, you're going to take all the money you've made, less all the money you've spent, and you're going to find out if you've made a profit. Well, not quite, but in essence. So it is, anytime you see income, it's going to be a revenue. Cash. Yeah, that is the, that 
right there is definitely a resource that will help make you money. Telephone expense. Investment by owner. You're going to find that in your statement of changes in equity, right? So if you put money in, does the value of your business go up? Yes. Right? You've entered money. When you take money out with the withdrawal, does the value of your business go down? Right. So the same principle applies. Supplies. Yep, they help you make money, right? That's what the whole point of assets are. They help you generate revenue. Wages expense. Oops. Fuel expense. Notes payable. Why is it a liability? Does anyone know what a note is? Can you guess what a note is? Yeah, it's a, it's a bank loan, basically. It's a loan. It's a formal loan. So when you get a bill from your cell phone company and you haven't paid it yet, have they given you a loan? No, they haven't. So that would be an account payable. When you go to your bank and ask for $10,000 for a new car, have they given you a loan? Yeah, so that'd be a note payable. One's formal, one's, one's informal. <laughs> Merchandise inventory. <laughs> Utilities expense. <laughs> Vehicles. Salaries payable. Yeah. Building. Okay, this next one is one of those, it's not a real account. So when I say account, I mean, when I get a, a bill, so I get my telephone bill in, for, I keep using that as an example. So I get my telephone bill in, in the mail, right? And I need to, uh, I need to apply an account to it. So I need to give it an expense account. So normally all of these accounts would be accompanied with numbers. And so when you're entering in your accounting system, you would just have them, you'd have a list of the numbers or most bookkeepers will know, have their numbers memorized. So which account would I put the telephone bill to towards? Telephone. telephone expense, exactly. So I'm gonna write down telephone expense, account 5,382 or whatever I've it's applied to it. And when I, when I entered into the system, that's what it is, that is what is, it's organized into. Uh, profit loss, owner's capital beginning and ending. These are not accounts that I can actually apply a bill to, right? I, can, I can't write it down, I can't put it in. So these belong on certain statements, but they don't belong, uh, they don't belong in an, an actual account. So these are basically like category accounts uh, where all the other expenses will add up and then give you a profit loss, if that makes sense. So where, where might we see the profit loss? We're gonna find it on our income statement. It's gonna be at the very bottom of the income statement and that, that very bottom will then flow into our... So what happens when your business is profitable, makes money. At the end of the year, you have a profitable business. Does the value of your business go up or down? Up. up. And if you have a, a not a profitable, if you have a net loss, the value of your business will go down. 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 Either way, that net profit or loss is gonna flow into your statement of changes in equity, regardless of whether it made money. Because if you have a profitable business, at the end of the year, when we summarize it, you have more, your business is more valuable. If you're the 100% owner, you have a more valuable asset, more valuable business. So we're gonna add that into our statement of changes in equity. 
If you're overwhelmed or confused, don't worry. We go through pretty much every one of these actions, chapter by chapter, slowly. This is very, chapter one, the reason why the smart reading took so long is because it's so broad. It just touches on a tiny little bit of everything. Equipment. Maintenance expense. Land. Unearned revenue. What is unearned revenue? Why is it an asset? So what is revenue? Yeah, it's uh, providing a service or a good, right? When you, when you have a, a transaction, positive transaction for your business, when you're making money, basically. So, unearned revenue would be, so who here has uh, ever pre-ordered uh, any gamers in here? Anyone play video games? Yeah? Okay. Have you ever pre-ordered a game? Right, because you got excited about it and you, you wanted to make sure you had it when the day it comes out. Did did you were you able to play the game as soon as you pre-ordered it? No. no, you have to wait, right? So that would be for them, for that company, that would be an unearned revenue. They haven't provided you a service or a good for your money yet. What's an asset? Well, for the company that we're referring to, we just talked about it from the customer standpoint. So you pre-order your game or your movie or whatever you, you do, you put a deposit down on a renovation and you're waiting for the contractor to come and do it. You've given them money, you basically given them money to promise that, you'll, that they'll come back and they'll do the job or that they'll provide the service. But until they do, what does our revenue recognition principle state? Sorry, so what, so what is revenue recognition? All good. Who, who wrote it down? Recognizing revenues for the period of time. Slow, slow, slowly though. Recognizing revenues for the period of time when they were generated. Yeah, so we need to recognize revenues to the period of time uh, when, they, when they occur. So ha if you haven't provided a good or service, have you done anything to, to earn that revenue? No. no. Until you do, do you owe them? You do, right? They give you a deposit. They can cancel, withdraw it. You have to give that back. So if you owe somebody something, what would that be? So this is basically, unearned revenue is basically a, is, is a um, liability. It's the receiving a deposit for work you haven't completed or something you haven't sold. Right, because until you do that action, until you actually do the work, you owe them, right? You owe your customer. So it's a liability. Rent revenue. Right, so this would be, what type of business would have a lot of this? If you're, if you're a landlord, yeah. Real estate, exactly. Supplies expense. Interest receivable. Asset, because you are expecting to receive an uh, interest payment. Rent expense. There you go. And that is the start of learning about the accounts.